Hey everyone, this is Greg with Crossing Jordan Ministries, and I have got a super exciting guest with me today. Actually, two guests. I have Peggy Joyce Ruth, author of the uh, world famous book Psalm 91, God's Umbrella of Protection, and I also have her assistant with me on the uh, on the air, and that is Ann Johnson. And so. Uh, today we're going to be talking about Psalm 91. There are all kinds of things happening. You can see the background I have is the American flag. Um, I am coming at this from a from a very patriotic, pro-American, uh, God save America uh, aspect because I see what's happening in our country. And uh, personally, I think that uh, if we don't stand up as Christians and defend this country and defend our God-given freedoms and rights, there's a good chance we could lose them in a year or so or sooner. Uh, with what's happening. And this this attack is not going to end. And the corona crisis doesn't look like it's going anywhere anytime soon. So uh, anybody that knows about Psalm 91 knows that it talks about uh, supernatural protection, especially from uh, plagues, which corona is a plague. It's a virus. So yes. anyway, Peggy and Ann, thank you for joining me today and welcome to the program. Thank you. It's so good to be with you. It's very good. So Psalm 91, when I think of Psalm 91, I can't think of a name that stands out more next to Moses who wrote Psalm 91 than Peggy Joyce Ruth because your book's all over the place. <laughs> you've been on Christian TV, you've, you've, been, uh, you've spoken all over the country, um, you've been in ministry for over 50 years. So I know you've got an amazing story on Psalm 91, and that's one of the things I want you to share with our audience to start. Give, tell us a little bit of background on your history, Peggy. How did you um, get into uh, Psalm 91? How did this take on so much meaning with you to the point where you started a ministry that 50 years later is still going strong based on Psalm 91? Well, it was very supernatural. I, uh, uh, I was looking, when I was in my early 20s, I was looking at all the things that were coming on the earth. And of course, back then it wasn't anything compared to what it is now, but it looked big to me. There was cancer and heart disease. And, uh, you know, everywhere I looked, some of my close friends were, uh, you know, really being hit hard. And uh, I got so panicked and um, I, I, I just saw everywhere I look, something horrible is happening. And I worked myself up into such a stew that I ended up in going to a psychiatrist. He even put me through shock treatments and, uh, after I got through all the shock treatments thinking, okay, you know, now I'm going to be okay. Well, I wasn't. And so I realized the world does not have any answers for me. And so I, I, I was a Christian, but I wasn't really walking that closely with the Lord. And so I just said, God, the world has no answers. What do we do? And so he told me, that he was the only answer. And at the time, that didn't mean that much to me, but boy, since then, I realized he is the only answer. And so anyway, uh, I had tried everything else. And so one day, uh, I was still so much in fear of everything that was happening on the earth. One day, I just prayed and I said, God, is there any way to be protected from all the evil we see coming on the earth? Or do we just take our chances like everybody else and, and uh, you know, try to do the best we can? And I lay down and went immediately to sleep and had a spiritual dream. And in the dream, I was outside asking the same question. I was saying, Lord, is there any way to be protected from all the evil we see coming on the earth? Or do we just, you know, grin and bear it and, and not worry about what comes? And suddenly, God's voice came out of heaven and said, in your day of trouble, call on me and and I will answer. You should have seen me. I mean, I started dancing in the dream and jumping and clapping. And I, I, I was so happy. And I realized God had given me an answer. And suddenly I looked around and the field started filling up with people. And the more I rejoiced, they were rejoicing and they were clapping. And as far as I could see in every direction, there were people being added. And we were all rejoicing over the fact that God had given us an answer. Well, instantly I woke up and uh, I couldn't, my feet wouldn't even stand still. I mean, I was off that bed jumping and clapping and rejoicing. And I mean, I was all by myself, but they probably heard me in the next block. And uh, so anyway, the next day, someone just mentioned 
the word Psalm 91. They didn't say what was in it. But when I heard those words, now back then, I didn't know my Bible very well. I didn't even know how many Psalms there were. I didn't even know there were 91 Psalms. But uh, when I heard the, the Psalm 91, something exploded on the inside of me. And I nearly tore my Bible up, turning to, to see what it had to say. Mm -hmm. And when I found it, there it was, every answer that I had ever been looking for. I mean, an answer for every fear, every problem. I mean, it was all right there. And I was bouncing up and down, holding my Bible, bouncing up and down. I was so excited. And so the Lord had me get into Psalm 91 and start just researching it, every word. And I, I, I knew God had supernaturally given it to me. I knew I didn't find it. And uh, boy, that started me on a walk with God that has never stopped. You know, here it is uh, 50 years later, and I'm still just, I, I get so excited. Every time I get a chance to share about Psalm 91, I, I just, I can hardly hold myself back because I, I've seen so many miracles. And I, uh, after we put the books out, there are people all over the world, literally, that send me their miracles. They tell me about how they put Psalm 91 to work and how uh, it worked in their life. And anyway, I just can never thank God enough. I get so excited about it. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. That's a great, great story. And I did watch a video before I did this interview here with you, and I saw a Sid Roth interview that you had uh, uh, confessed that, you know, when this started going on, that you had almost some kind of a breakdown that your husband, uh, they did shock treatments on you and everything. And is that correct? Uh, absolutely. And, uh, you know, I had tried everything. I, I went to a, a precious psychiatrist. He was just a, a good man, had a huge, uh, well, it wasn't really a ministry, but he had a, uh, had so many people coming to him for help and he wanted me to get well, but he didn't have the answers. And uh, I, he was even a Christian, but he still didn't have the answer. But after that is when, when God gave me Psalm 91. And um, uh, then the Lord began to show me that I couldn't just read Psalm 91 and be excited about it, that I had to make it a part of my life every single day. And that's what I've done for the past 50 years. I probably haven't missed going out and walking and praying Psalm 91 in a prayer of thanksgiving back to the Lord. I probably have done it, maybe I've missed five times in, in 50 years. I do it every day. I make that a top priority because that has become my life. I, I wow. just, you know, and I do it out loud in a prayer of thanksgiving and so that I can keep it alive. I, you can't just read it or think about it. You've got to say it out loud. There's something about saying it that makes it just kind of explode out of you. And as you do that, without even trying, you develop a love walk. All of a sudden, the Lord just becomes so precious. And you realize that he loves us that much is why he gave us that precious promise. And so I do that every day. And I always tell people, you know, you can read Psalm 91 and you can receive Psalm 91. But if you just think about it every little while, every day or so, or every week or so, it's not going to do that much good. It's got to become really one of the most important things in our life, knowing that God loved us so much that he gave us answers for every single thing that's coming on the earth against us. Hmm. That's a really good way to put it an answer yeah. to everything coming on the earth. And there's a lot of things coming on the earth oh, against us right now. There's, this is, there's never been a greater time in the history of the world to be plugged into Psalm 91 than right now. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So, and there's something about saying it out loud that releases power. I, I don't, God began to show me that, that I could think it and I could read it. But when I started to say it, and believe it in my heart and say it with my mouth. It just, it started making things explode on the inside of me. And it started affecting everything about my life. That's amazing because I, the way the Psalm starts out, it says, I will say of the Lord. Yes. So you talk about the power of your words. So it's not something you just take and read in the Bible and then think that it's going to have power. It will. But when you actually speak it out, like you're talking about, and I even downloaded this from your from your website you actually have a, a whole prayer your personal prayer covenant that's amazing anybody can go download that for free about psalm 91 
And I've even been saying it now since I printed yes. it out. My, my assistant, bless her heart, she's the one that put that on. I really appreciate that so much. Yeah, well, that's that's awesome. So, yeah. how did you how did you go from kind of a young, immature Christian that really didn't know a lot to finding Psalm ninety one to then becoming this like world famous book author and and part of a, a major ministry now with this message. You know, what was so amazing, I didn't think about ever sharing it with anybody else necessarily. I just saw it as an answer for me and my family. And so the whole family grabbed hold of it. Every day we confessed it together. I would go out and confess it again by myself and thank God for it. And uh, many times when I was confessing, I'd get so excited that I'd just be dancing and clapping. And I that was a daily ritual. And... Um, uh, all of a sudden, without even trying, people started knocking on my door and saying, you know, I have this problem and I need some answers. And I was just praying and asking God, oh, how do I get answers? And your name came to my mind. And I started having people uh, actually knock on my door. And so I didn't plan a ministry. It just all of a sudden, it was just there. Hmm. And um, uh, so I... I I'd have people call me and we'd talk about Psalm 91 on the phone. And then one day God told me, I want you to put it in, in book form. And I'm not, I wasn't a writer and I just said, God, <laughs> but he did it. He did it. He wanted it. And when God wants something, if we'll just be available, well, he makes it happen. Yeah. Well, amen for that. Yes. So uh, once you put it into a book, what, and you've written a, no, a number of books since that one, the first one, but what, so what led you to get into ministry after that? Did, did the book lead to ministry or did that happen down the road even after the book? No, actually we got into ministry first. I got so well and my husband was so happy that he had a wife back that <laughs> uh, we just started uh, just sharing with people and, and leading people to the Lord. And, um, then he felt like he was really called to, to be a pastor. And we started a church. Uh, we had the church for 30 years. And um, uh, we started that church and it, it grew. And, you know, we taught about Psalm 91 a lot, you know, from the church. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we kind of became a church known as a Psalm 91 ministry. Mm -hmm. And uh, we started having people... I would have so many people call me long distance and I'd say, how did you know to call me? You know, and it was amazing how, you know, they would have a problem and then know a friend that knew about our church and they'd call us. And it was after that then that we put it in book form. And uh, I just thought that we were going to do a book that was going to bless our church. That's what I thought would happen. So I was shocked when all of a sudden it, it really started exploding and going different places. And I've been on the Sid Roth show three times because uh, people, they need this, they need this word. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. That's, uh, that's really exciting. So you must get testimonials on a daily basis, I, I would have to imagine, because it says you've sold over 6 million copies of the main book, right? Yes. Uh, people call us and they want to share their testimony. It's kind of like me. When I got set free, I wanted to tell people. And so Anne is just, uh, she just gets letters and everything all the time telling about their miracles and telling how they put Psalm 91 to work and uh, how it, how it, worked. Uh, I had a friend, well, we, she was a friend to all of us in our church, and her name was Renee, and she uh, really loved Psalm 91, put it to work, but that doesn't keep the enemy some time from trying. He comes knocking at the door, and she found out that she had lupus in the uh, final stages, and so they had her MD Anderson, and they told her, and this was in about October, and they told her she would not see Christmas. And um, I, was, I was talking to her, and she said, I have Psalm 91. I am not going to give up my Psalm 91 covenant. And uh, uh, they even told her, little, her daughter, prepare yourself because your mother's not going to live. 
And she told, when they, they left the room, she told her daughter, don't you listen to that. We've got a Psalm 91 covenant. And so she was confessing and she got worse and worse. Uh, her liver started shutting down. Her kidneys uh, were shutting down. They gave her one horrible report after another. And every time I'd call her, she would minister to me. She would say, I've got a Psalm 91 covenant. And she said, the devil's going to have to pull off. And um, so anyway, of course, the doctor, she wouldn't, wasn't doing all the extreme things the doctors were asking her to do. And she just said, no, I, I'm, and not that she's against doctors. I didn't mean that. She did a lot of things they told her to do, but some of the extreme things. She said, no, I'm just going to trust God. And um, so anyway, it was months later where she had kept standing and finally Little by little, it started turning around. Well, that's been like 20 years ago, and she's all over the United States preaching the gospel now. <laughs> wow. Praise the Lord. That's awesome. So sometimes the enemy comes to try to steal, and that's when we have to stand our ground and say, no, I I'm not going there. And the enemy will really try to come in with symptoms. And we've got to realize that those symptoms, we, we can either receive them or we can say no. And there's times when those symptoms are coming on somebody's body and they, and just like Renee, they have to say, those symptoms are coming from the enemy. I'm not going to receive them. I have a covenant with the God of the universe. And sometimes we have to do some really tall standing. The reason I use Renee's testimony is because she probably had to stand harder than anyone else I knew. And, but she, she was determined. She was not going to give up her covenant and the ones who stand and hang on to it, uh, it works. It's wonderful. Wow. That's but sometimes it's a battle for a little while. I'm sure. I'm sure. And I know I discussed a little bit before we uh, did this interview about how I got turned on to Psalm 91. Uh, I mean, I've known about Psalm 91 for, for many, many years, and I've read it and I've spoken it, but I've never really like made it a daily thing where it's so important, but the Corona crisis has like changed our country so much with so many yes. things happening. It's like, wow, there's yes. nothing else to cling to except for the Lord right now. And exactly. God, if we don't have your help and your protection. We're not going to make it through this. Exactly. So it has really been a, a crazy year. So yeah, for me, um, I was diagnosed back in November with uh, stage three metastatic melanoma, which was a complete shock to me. Um, and I've been a Christian since, uh, 1993. And so, um, you know, when I got that diagnosis, I didn't initially freak out because I know what the Bible says. I know what God's word says. And I, um, you know, I was shocked that I was diagnosed, but at the, at the end of the day, I still was a matter of rolling up your sleeves and getting into combat mode, um, and not yes. letting it, you know, detract you. And I know, like you mentioned in the beginning of this video, the biggest thing with Psalm 91 is about speaking it out and mm -hmm. how we have to take ownership on the words that we speak and how we have to be so careful and guarded about what we allow to come out of our mouths. And I can't tell you I'm perfect because I still struggle. It's a daily battle with, with uh, what you let come out of your mouth. But I have made a conscious effort to try to speak right words and not declare this as something that is in my body that's part of me. You know, it's a foreign invader. Uh, when, when I had the cancer, it was a tumor about the size of an egg underneath my right armpit. It started as a, a melanoma on my shoulder blade, and then it went to my right armpit a couple years later. And uh, I didn't initially go to the doctor. I, I have been in the health and nutrition field for a number of years. And so I called all the people I know, and I said, listen, what are you, what are you using for this? And I started taking a lot of different products, praying against it. I didn't even tell my wife initially because I knew she would have gone into panic mode and I, being in the health and nutrition field, have been really concerned about ever you know, going under chemo and radiation. So I'm like, I don't want to go to the doctor because I don't want chemo and I don't want radiation. So long story short, after I got the diagnosis, um, I had to really get aggressive with the scriptures. I mean, in the morning specifically, when I'd get yes. up first thing and I'd have to, you know, get in the word and confess the word and speak the word. And one of the things that I kept doing was I would speak to this tumor and I'd say, listen, you are dried up. You are a dead mass that doesn't belong in this body. I command yes. you to get out of this body right now in the name of Jesus. I command you to be dried up like a dead fig tree at the roots, just like Jesus speaking to the fig tree. And, uh, you know, it was, it was a challenge. It was a battle, but I'm happy to say I had surgery 
at the end of April. And when they removed this tumor, for, first of all, it never spread anywhere else. It was only quarantined to my right armpit and mm -hmm. it had never spread anywhere else. And then, um, and then when they, they removed the tumor, the uh, results said no viable evidence of metastatic melanoma detected. So the That's tumor funny. itself was dead. But in the midst of all this, I did do some cancer treatments. It started in January. I did immunotherapy and I did three rounds of immunotherapy with these two drugs and um, it almost killed my liver. So after the third treatment, my liver enzymes went through the roof. I went down to the office and the doctor's like, we can't do any more treatments for you. There's nothing else we can do for you. And he said, and not only that, your liver enzymes are so high, I need to make an emergency meeting for you to go see a liver doctor. I think you're gonna need a liver transplant and don't plan on going home today. When you go there, you might be there over the weekend. So that was the worst news I ever received. I mean, I literally was out in the car with my wife bawling after. I'm like, this is unbelievable. I can't believe we're going through this. Uh, long story short, I went to go see the liver doctor and he's like, um, listen, man, I don't think you're in liver failure. Those numbers are really high, but you're not in failure. I think that you'll calm down and you'll be okay. And so that was, that was early March. And then the Corona crisis hits and all that chaos comes down. So obviously trying to really connect with the Lord in an even deeper way was at the forefront of my life every day, morning, noon, yes. night. So March 25th, I'm sitting in my bedroom and I'm praying to God and I'm, you know, like, like I do a lot of times, but for whatever reason, it, it was a more intimate encounter with the Lord. I'm sure you've experienced it and I'm sure you've experienced it, you know, where you just, God's trying to get something through to you. You just know yes. it. You're, he's actually just trying to talk to you and tell you. And not every time you pray to God, you feel that way. So this was one of those times that that happened to me. And I'm going to backtrack briefly. So in January, my wife found this um, YouTube link from a, from a group called Rivers in the Desert. And it's a loop. It's a three and a half hour loop called God's Promises. And this guy goes through the entire Bible from the beginning to the end. And he, all the scriptures that talk about God's healing, God's promises, God's protection, whatever, he reads them. But he's got some really nice, soothing music in the background as he's doing it. And he's got a real interesting kind of a calming voice the way he does it. So March 25th, as I'm doing all this, I'm thinking, okay, I just felt like I needed to listen to a Christian song or listen to something after I'm praying to God. And as God is my witness, I open my phone up. I, I said, I'm going to put on YouTube and, and listen to this loop. And I open it and I go to hit play. And I'm not kidding you, Peggy. It opened right up to Psalm 91. Oh, not a I second before. <laughs> right at Psalm 91 is when the loop started. I got goose pimples. I started crying. I was like, man, it was like God had just left his throne yes. and sat right next to me in my yes. bedroom and read Psalm 91 to me. It was yes. such a dramatic encounter. I'm like, what in the what in the world is this all for? What does it mean? And so then I started doing more research on Psalm 91. And I said, okay, well, who wrote Psalm 91? Moses wrote Psalm 91, to the best that I could tell. And so when it talks about a thousand falling by your side and 10,000 at your right hand and all this crazy stuff going on, that was the Passover in Egypt when the angel of death went through and killed all the firstborn of the Egyptians. And so it says that God instructed Moses to take a Passover lamb, all the houses of Israel, take a Passover lamb, kill the lamb and take the blood and put it over the top of your door and on the sides of your door. You can read this in the book of Exodus that talks about it. So when I saw that, I said, wow, that's amazing. That represents the cross. That's the blood of Jesus. That was a foreshadowing and a representation of him because thousands of years later, he would take our sins and take them to the cross so that we are saved from the angel of death. We're, the, he is the Passover lamb to protect us, and it's his blood that protects us. And so I felt a deep connection to Psalm 91 and Jesus and his blood sacrifice for us. So that got me on. And that was, and if you remember, um, Passover and Easter both came in early April this year, and they happened almost at the height of when the coronavirus crisis was going on. This was when we were in lockdown. Nobody was going anywhere. And so to me, that had even more significance. So I, I remember telling my mom one day, I was like, Mom, 
we got to try to put a cross on our doors or something, something that, that represents this, this blood, you know, over the door and on the sides of the door. And the only thing that I could think of is a cross. I said, well, maybe we should put crosses on our doors. So my mom, she's so cute. She ends up coming in one day and she, she made these by hand at, at home just to put on the door. So we, me and the other kids in the family, my sisters and brother, we all had these things hanging up off of our door. But I said, man, I really would like to find something. And then I ended up finding this this cross I'm sorry it's breaking up because of the background there if, if I can hold it up without it all right so there it yeah, is yeah yeah it's coming across beautiful I love so this that. is made by a, a, a group up in Michigan uh, these guys are all uh, combat veterans except for the owner of the company and so they've got all these vets that make these crosses in this plant in Michigan so I was like wow when I saw this thing I knew I got to do something with this. I bought one and I got it hanging on my front door. Now people see it and they're like, why'd you put it up there on your front door? And I tell them exactly what I'm telling you. And a lot more people are going to, going to hear about it now as well. So I know it's kind of a long story. I hope I'm not boring you, but that ended up leading me to, I need to do something with Psalm 91. Like you felt the same way when you came across it. It wasn't just, I need Psalm 91 to get myself better. I need Psalm 91 to get myself better, to, to live like it says at the end, with long life, I'll satisfy you and show you my salvation, to overcome cancer, to be here for my family, to be here to be a witness for the Lord, to be an ambassador of his kingdom. So I said, man, I really, really need to try to do something with this message. This isn't just for me, even though I'm speaking it for me, I'm praying it over me and my family, and I'm believing it, and that nothing's going to happen to me, and I'm going to be supernaturally protected, but this is a message for our whole country. Like I said in the beginning, our nation is hanging in the balance. Just, just what's happening, you know, with other nations, with China, who's kind of getting their back up now, and they are yes. making threats yes. against America. They're, they want to take over Taiwan, and they want Hong Kong completely under their control now. They want to control this country in a much bigger way than they used to. So I feel a great threat against our country externally, but I also feel an even bigger threat internally for one, the virus with the corona crisis that's happening, and also um, the riots and all the unrest that's happening, the attack against our law enforcement officers. Listen, you can think whatever you want about the police, but if we don't have police guarding and protecting our cities and our country, it's anarchy. It's like the Wild West. It's total lawlessness and chaos. So this Psalm 91 message, I believe, is not just for me to get over cancer or not just for you 50 years ago to get over some health problems, but this is a message for the United States of America right now, right now. We need millions and millions of people all over this country that start confessing Psalm 91, that go to your website and download the prayer and start praying it, reading it, telling other people about it buying your books and giving them to people they know, buying these crosses and hanging them on their door or hanging them in their house and their walls and whatever, and getting completely radical. If people are in law enforcement, then buy somebody one of these. Buy your, your uncle that's a cop one of these crosses. Buy your uncle who's a military vet one of these crosses. I mean, we really need to do everything in our power to stand up. Everything that's happened with Corona, in my opinion, um, it's almost like a test. Like God's, God didn't cause the virus to happen. And he's allowed Satan to go this far with it. But I almost think it's like God's letting him go so far. And then he's waiting to see what the church is going to do. Um, I could be wrong on that. But I think, you know, I feel a, a great I think it really is up to us. Yes. It is. It is. Yes. And I think God is wanting his uh his children to get it inside of them so much that they they're confessing it every day. They're thanking God. And then all of a sudden we have it inside of us. And now it breaks open where we start then not just praying just over our little family, but we start praying over uh, the leadership uh, in, uh, in, in the federal government, then the leadership in the, uh, you know, our state governments and down clear to our local governments. We need to pray Psalm 91 over each one of them, pray that they'll know it and it'll come alive to them. And if, if all of the Christians get it in their hearts and then they start praying it over uh, their country, we'll see unbelievable things start happening. I believe, I believe that. that. I believe yes. that with all my heart, Peggy Joyce. I believe yes. we're going to see a mighty move of God if we can get enough Christians to do this. 
Exactly. We've got to have Which that. Means this video needs to go viral and this, this information needs to get out there as quickly as possible. I, listen, I see what's happening with just with the presidential election, all the chaos and trouble they're talking about that might come just from the election. But I feel like our country is facing a serious crisis and God's given us advanced uh, weaponry in the form of Psalm 91 to go out and do battle before the crisis hits so that we can win because he wants us to win. Beloved, exactly. I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prospers, as it says in third uh, epistle of John, verse two. He, he doesn't, he's not involved in making us sick and making us broke or causing all these problems. That's all the devil. It's not God that's bringing Corona on us. It's the devil. Even look Excellent. at the word Corona. It means crown. I don't know how many people have, have, uh, not made the connection with with that, that it's like a crown. You got the four horsemen of the apocalypse and they're all wearing crowns in the book of Revelation. So Corona is some kind of a play on, on Satan and the, the, the horsemen of the apocalypse. I don't know if that is one of the horsemen or not, but certainly you could see how a lot of things can happen relatively fast because look how fast Corona hit, that we could go from normal to almost like biblical end times, almost at the snap of a finger. So a lot of people are predicting that things are going to get even rougher at the end of the year. I hope that's not the case. I hope that, you know, we can avert this crisis by doing all these different things. I think we can if we'll, as Christians, if we'll all start praying. Mm -hmm. If we'll put Psalm 91 to work in our life, in our family's life, and realize that the first thought in our mind when, when something happens, the first thought in our mind, the first words out of our mouth needs to be the, our, our promises in Psalm 91, not only over our own family, but over our nation. I think we can change what the enemy has planned. I, and, and I know I've heard the same things about the end of the year. And I think it's up to us as Christians. And if we're complacent and we just sit back and do nothing, uh, you know, that's not good. We're going to have to put it to work and just say, Lord, you called us for such a time as this. And when, when we're born in this particular time, that means God wants to use us. But we've got to be willing. And the way we're willing is to put his word to work. Hmm. And we've all, got a, we've all got a job to do. We've got to do it. Yeah. <laughs> you know? I, I heard uh, from Ann when I talked to her about scheduling the, inter the interview, she said that... Uh, you use these, the, this saying, and I, I love it. Every home, every heart, everywhere. Tell me about that, because that, that's powerful. I mean, I could see like shirts or hats, every home, every heart, everywhere, Psalm 91. I, I people are going to think I'm kind of nuts. I'm telling you, we need to get crazy with this. We, this has got to be a national deal to save our country. Absolutely. I want Ann to tell you about that. You know, when we were talking about that last year, we did not – envision corona at all and so boy that came alive even more like we were working on how do we get psalm 91 to everybody you know that was a goal but all of a sudden everybody needed psalm 91 at the same time so um it was part of the definitely part of the plan and so we're working on it, it folks like you who grab hold of psalm 91 and help us share the message share the books it means so much and we have folks that maybe they don't have a ministry per se with a website but they'll open their trunk and they'll have a you know a box of books and start handing them out and and um, we in texas we call it book them <laughs> but <Yeah>. anyway <laughs> you know um when we can go inside to a restaurant it's a great thing to put with a tip for the waitress we're not really doing that much anymore but um just people where wherever you are um, getting the, the book in their hand or telling them about Psalm 91 is the way we're going to get it into every heart, every home, everywhere. Absolutely. So, yeah. It's, Peggy, it's have, you, uh, have you had any, any uh, high-profile political people that have reached out to you in light of everything going on based on what's happening? Or, or? Uh, We have had uh, a, a few in Texas, uh, you know, when uh, when the politician came. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, yes. I can't think of his name right now, but um, like we've sent books in, into government places before. We haven't necessarily gotten a response from, 
from them, but we're, we're believing they get to the right hands of the right people. Absolutely. And so uh, then people will write and say, I want to sit, send a set. And we are like, go ahead, because I don't think we can get too many sent into Washington, D.C. Absolutely. So, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. But it, it's just got to be on the inside of us first that I have a covenant. So I'm not going to be afraid of the corona coronavirus or the cancer or whatever, you know, where, where that's coming out of our mouth and in our heart. And where we say, you know, a thousand may fall at my side, 10,000 at my right hand, but it's not going to approach me. I have a Psalm 91 covenant. And then if, if uh, symptoms uh, rise up, I mean, take authority over them. Those symptoms are coming from the enemy. And he does that to try to make us say, oh, it didn't work, you know, and throw my covenant away. No, that uh, when the enemy throws symptoms on our body, we need to stamp our foot even harder than ever and say, no, back off. And he will, if, if, we'll, if we'll stand and do that. And some people don't, they read Psalm 91 and they don't know what it means when it says a pestilence. We need to realize that a pestilence is any deadly disease. It can be cancer, it can be heart disease, it can be coronavirus, but any deadly disease that attaches itself to a person's body, that's what a pestilence is. And three different times, he tells us, you know, uh, in verse three, he tells us we don't have to be afraid of the pestilence that will not approach us. Verse six, he says it again. And, and then uh, later he says, no evil will befall you. And we need to start believing that and then just telling our friends and uh, when we write a letter, we need to, uh, when we write to someone, we need to in the letter remind them of Psalm 91 and, and tell them the promises. And I love to share testimonies that we get in. That's why we put testimonies in the back of every book. We've done a lot of uh, derivatives of Psalm 91. We've done it for little children. We've done it for teenagers. We've done it for military. Uh, we've done it for mothers. And we have all these derivatives. And in every one of the books, we have new testimonies, you know, and, um, uh, I'm always telling Ann, we've got to write another book because we've got so many testimonies coming. We've got to use them. <laughs> I have to put them out. But uh, because we want every age and every, you know, whether it be military, whether it be mothers, whatever, that they'll know Psalm 91 works for them. I know you, like? you've, get, you've gotten so many testimonials. Uh, so yes. I certainly don't want to make this video about a bunch of testimonials, but and I know you talked about one in the beginning. Are, are there... One or two that really stick out in addition to the one you talked about with that woman that was kind of battling there in the beginning or? Well, you know, um, maybe about four years ago, Peggy Joyce was invited to a retirement party for a Sergeant Major on a, on a base. And when she got there, she met the man that she and another person had helped get Psalm 91 books for his whole um, you know, group of men and women who were going into combat. There were 183 of them. And so when he brought them home and, and retired, he invited Peggy Joyce and um, onto his retirement party and they met there. And this week we've had some correspondence with him and, and he basically says, you know, Psalm 91 may be encouraging to some people, but to me and my men and women, it saved our life. That and the Lord, just knowing Psalm 91, he brought all of those Marines home all 183 yes wow. and so that was very encouraging i spoke with a lady this week in atlanta and we're searching for this gentleman's name but she's told it to someone else and then she told it to me she was in the atlanta airport and they wouldn't allow her to carry the the books around but she could carry a psalm 91 um, postcard or a prayer that she she had and so um she would look for military people and she found um, a gentleman and said, you know, I need to give you this. And he was very interested in the Psalm 91, but he had 25 uh, men and women with him and she didn't have enough. That was her last one. And she just said, you know, you need to pray this every day when you get over into, I think it was Afghanistan. Well, um, she happened to be there when he came home um, in the airport and he found her and he said, I never thought I would see you again. But anyway, it had saved their life mm -hmm. over there. They, uh, they read it every morning as a group. And uh, one day they were entering into a building 
decided they better stop and say it again, you know, praying over themselves as they were walking in the building. The building did crumble and people that were looking on the outside said there can't be anybody alive in there. And, and all of his, um, his entire group came out mm -hmm. untouched. And so, um, you know, for the police officers now, for wives of police officers or, or husbands, if it's the other way around, they need, they need this. We have a lady here in town who says, you know, her book is in her prayer closet in, in pieces where she's hung different parts of it on her wall and prayed over her husband every time he goes out to work. And um, so it's, it's powerful. It really is. Absolutely. Wow. Well, I know in the scriptures there, it talks about the Lord saying he's magnified his word even above his name. So he puts more stock even in his word than he does in his name. Not, I'm not maybe saying that correctly because I don't mean that his name no, is powerful, but, but his word, he's put it up there. In the beginning was the word, the word was with God, the word was God. So yes. yeah, I love what you're saying. It, it, it makes so much sense. And, uh, you know, that God is going to always back up his word. He's going to support his word. And if his word says that, and it's been true for thousands of years, it's still true today in 2020. Nothing's changed. So, true. you know what? If we had 50 million Americans, because I know there's that many Christians left in America, and there's probably a lot more than that. If we had 50 million Christians start saying Psalm 91 every day and start taking this thing like a bull by the horns, then this whole crisis would be dealt with quickly. Uh, yes. Jesus talks about, you know, if two or more come together and agree on something, that it will be bound in heaven as it is on earth. So, you know, we need to come together, bind things up as believers, speak against what's happening that's it's not lining up with the word, and then standing uh, firmly on the word and the things yes. that it talks about that protect us. Because God doesn't want us to get taken out in this crisis. He needs us to be his representatives here. This world's gone crazy. I mean, how many people know God in an intimate way, uh, it, those numbers seem like they're going down. You know, you look around what's happening all over the world. It's, it's crazy what's going on. Absolutely crazy. I mean, I've, I've known about it for a long time that we would be in times like this, but to see it and have it kind of unfold when you've known about it for many years, it, it's, it takes on a different perspective. So. Yes. And it's exciting to see that there are groups rising up in different places, like in uh, California. Uh, it showed the pictures of all these Christians who had come out on the beach. They were baptizing in the, in the ocean. Some of them were ministering to people. Some of them were singing praise songs. And as far as you can see, there were uh, Christians everywhere just rejoicing and uh, uh you know, acknowledging the Lord. So we're seeing these pockets burst open in different places, and it's very exciting to me to see that. Uh, I just feel like what God has shown me is that Christians can't just be uh, lackadaisical and, and laid back. We're in a time now where we've got to say, this is more important than my job. It's more important than anything I've ever done in the past. Now is my time to grab hold of the Lord Jesus Christ and make him Lord of my life, make him Lord of everything, and know that he loves us so much is why he gave us this protection covenant. Mm -hmm. And uh, the more we realize that God gave it to us, the more we realize how much he loves us. He doesn't want us to go through the horrible things. And he's given us a way out, but we've got to take that way out. And so I'm finding people well, more than ever. Some people, when I first started uh, this uh, and, and did the first book, they didn't even know what Psalm 91, many people didn't know what Psalm 91 was, you know. And I know it's, you know, people in World War II, you know, they, uh, many of them put it to work. But I really didn't find many people who just, on the sidewalk knew what Psalm 91 was, but now they do. God's making it uh, bubble up in people's hearts. And he's doing that so that we'll put it to work in our lives and then spread it to other people. I think that's where we are right now. And um, we don't want to sit back complacently and do nothing. We want to say, no, God called me for this time. And I'm going to be, I'm going to be available and I'm going to be uh, working for the kingdom. Amen. Uh, I feel the same way. That's why I'm making this video with you. I, I want to get this information out. 
Yes. I love this country. I, there's no other country for us to run to to get safety anymore. You know, there's nowhere else to go. This is it. Right. So, uh, you know, if America falls or if we lose our way and, and we lose our Christian values as a nation, it, it, it game's up and Satan's going to own the whole world. So. And, but it's up to us as Christians. It really is. And God's pulling us and, uh, you know, wanting us to go in that direction. But we have to make that choice. And the Lord showed me that, you know, everybody's for the pro football, the big football tournaments. But he, the Lord showed me something. He said that when uh, someone is playing for a big pro team and they're getting ready for the big championship, they put it above everything else. I meant they practice every day. They don't wait and just go out on the field to play the game on the day of the, on, of the day of the tournament for weeks and weeks and months and months. They've been practicing and practicing and, and, uh, you know, talking about their team and, uh, because they put so much into it, so much energy, you know, it helps them to win. And God said, okay, if they're going to do that just for a football game, how, how much more important it is for us to realize what God's given to us. And I mean, just like that football team puts their whole life into it, for us to put our whole life into sharing Jesus and sharing these promises. And, and uh, uh, because not only are we getting them healed and, and protected in this life, but when we do it, we're saving them, when they accept Jesus, we're saving them for all eternity. Amen. It's worth everything. Yeah, that is. That is. And it's, it's a very rewarding thing. I'm sure you, you must feel a great sense of satisfaction knowing that uh, you've had people all over the world that have, you know, because of your book and your teachings and listening to what you've had to say that have turned to Psalm 91 just like you have and I have and, and they see the same things. And it, so that's got to really make you feel good inside knowing that you have played That's a, a exciting, hand. but it seems like the more we see this and see the people of gravity, we think about all those that haven't. There's so many more we've got to get to, yeah, you know. I know. We can't, uh, you know, we can't be just satisfied. Uh, it seems like the more that come in, the more we want in, you know. Hmm. And yeah. it, it takes wanting it, putting prayer into it, making it the number one thing in our lives, you know. Let me ask you a little bit about your ministry because uh, this is obviously going to be a video that goes out on, on YouTube and through social media channels. Um, people hear this. How do they get a hold of you? How do they get a copy of your books? And I also noticed when I was on your site, it looks like you have a complete section that's like a, a paid section that gives you access to a lot of other things with Psalm 91. Can you give, tell our audience what a little bit more about this. Yeah. So people can go to PeggyJoyceRuth.org. I noticed on your site you have uh, one of her books. So, Greg, that's awesome. Uh, people that maybe it's a mom who's got a child headed off to school. We've got a Psalm 91 for mom. So there is a place for that. But the website has so much more. It's a lot of the testimonies are on there. Um, there's articles written by Peggy Joyce that are also available. Um, there's a, there is a place if someone wants to be a part of, we call it the Psalm 91 family. They can sign up for that and just be a part. And Peggy Joyce has taught um, probably 40, 40 years Bible study. And so a lot of those archive studies uh, of her teachings are available. People that just want to learn more about faith or healing and, and uh, the Holy Spirit, things, things that are relevant today, um, those are available there as well. Uh, we have a newsletter people can sign up for. We send a newsletter weekly. Uh, it'll usually include a testimony or um, an audio, something like that. So we don't ever spam anybody. It's just a one time, you know, just once a week. And there's just an easy place to sign up on the site. So we just invite people to come take a look and see because there's, there's, um, I guess, like 50 years worth of information, you know, just knowledge, that wisdom, things that Peggy Joyce has taught 
us and we've tried to put it and convey it on that website. So I um, need to give them the telephone number if they happen to want to order a book. Yes, yeah, that'd be good. Our staff um, can help with just questions, you know, if it's which book should I get for my granddaughter or whatever. So that number is 325-646-6894. And it's in the back of any book uh, if someone just has a question and wants to call. So feel free to check it out. Okay. I guess one other thing I might say is we've had quite a few people sign up for a free Bible study on the YouVersion Bible app. It's a Psalm 91, 21-day devotional. Hmm. It's uh, Peggy Joyce's material. And uh, people that have never heard of Psalm 91 are doing it. And people that want a refresher. Maybe they read the book and just want to go back through it. And I, uh, we've had people write Peggy Joyce and say, I, I do it. I do the 21 days and then I'll start back over since this COVID has hit. They just, yeah. re, they're on repeat, kind of like you were, you know, with your healing scriptures. They just do the 21 days and then start it again. Yeah. So it's really easy to find. Wow. That's awesome. Is there uh, anything that, um, I didn't cover that, that you'd like to talk about before we conclude our interview. You covered so many nice things. Uh, I appreciate that. Um, uh, we, uh, we have a group that we call the Crossliners and uh, uh, my daughter teaches that group and we use Psalm 91 there so much. And so many of them, uh, uh, have gone now into full-time ministry and a lot of them have gone into uh, missionary work and so we now have people in different parts of the world and they're continuing the Psalm 91 message <laughs> where they are so uh, we're excited about that uh, we even get uh, letters and phone calls sometimes of people who have uh, in other countries and now they're able to uh, actually go and join one of those churches and and um, be a part of it in another country so that's been exciting wow and i'm glad you mentioned other countries because i know i got the american flag in the background and the american cross and i say america america and that's our country and obviously that's that's on my mind first but i do have compassion for the whole world and uh, this is something that affects the whole world. So this message is not just for America. I'm making a big push on it because I feel like we're gonna lose our country if we don't stand up for it. But it's going on everywhere. I mean, look what's happening in Australia now and, and in uh, New Zealand, they're talking about complete lockdowns and quarantines and, and oh, we can take kids away from their parents and put them in quarantine camps for two weeks without their parents knowing about it and all. I mean, the, the stuff that I'm hearing, it's ridiculous. So. Yes. Yeah, anybody that's a Christian anywhere in the world needs to be part of this. In fact, let's make this a global Psalm 91 message, not just yeah. for America. I believe it's important sure. for our country to save our country, but a whole global message. Psalm 91, like you said, every home, every heart, everywhere. That's right. <laughs> Love it. Yes. With the, with the new technology, I mean, um, I guess not that new, but with an ebook, people can have Psalm 91 really in any country. Yes. They can come to the side and download a, a Psalm 91. And just uh, just last week, the Psalm 91 Chinese edition became available. It's on our website. And oh, uh, we also have paper copies. And, and we our heart goes out to them. You know, they need it as And well. if people don't know how to pray, they could go to your website and they can download Peggy's Psalm 91 prayer that takes yes. the entire uh, psalm and personalizes it as though you are speaking it out as a prayer to God, which is really, really nice. Uh, you haven't um, done anything to uh, affect the integrity of the word by doing that. And it just puts it in a real personal manner. So anybody listening to this interview, go to her website and download that prayer. Start praying it every day because a lot of people don't know what to pray. They, they want to pray, but they don't know what to say. So you know what, if you're in that camp, there's the prayer. You can just get that and listen to it and, and read it and pray it out over your family and yourself and all your loved ones. So, amen. You know, for those that are on Facebook anyway, you know, if they're going to use some of their time for that, the Peggy Joyce Ruth Ministries page is available. Uh, it gets updated every day. People could find good news 
So yes. if they're looking for good news, go there, Instagram, YouTube. So there's lots of places to hear about Psalm 91. Awesome. Well, we it, was really, <laughs> it is good news. And it's certainly a pleasure uh, having this opportunity to interview you, you uh, ladies. I appreciate you taking the time out of your busy day to, to let me do that. Um, I know I forgot in the beginning, and you mentioned that you wanted to um, start off with a prayer, and I totally flaked out and started the interview and never said that. So uh, if you still feel compelled to do that, if you want to conclude with a prayer, we could do that. Like for me too? I will. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Father, we thank you for the Psalm 91 covenant that we have. We thank you, Father, that as this message goes out, that people will grab hold of it, no matter what occupation they're in, no matter what age they are, from the youngest to the oldest, Father, I thank you that Psalm 91 can become their personal covenant. And so, Father, we're just asking that you touch the hearts of those that will hear this message and help them go find a Bible, open it up, and read about Psalm 91. And we pray that they would fall in love with you and, and know you as their personal Savior. And Father, for those that are already Christians, we pray that this message would light a fire inside of them and that they would want to know more about Psalm 91 or maybe be a part of sharing a book or a prayer with a family member, a neighbor, their hairdresser, whomever. And so, Father, I thank you that um, together we can do Psalm 91 every heart, every home, everywhere. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 That's awesome. Thank you so much. It was a great honor with interviewing both you ladies. Thank you. Thank you for that prayer. Very powerful. So. Thank you. That was uh, really a blessing to us to be invited. Thank you. You're certainly welcome. So help us get this out, anybody that's watching this now. All you right. heard the message. You heard the information. This information needs to go viral. It needs to get out to the entire world, but especially our whole country as quickly as possible. So anybody that can help get that out there, we're counting on you to do it. Each and every one of us plays a role in the kingdom. There's a, you know, you look at your body and you have a finger and a hand and an eye. We're all part of the body of Christ. We all play a role. So you can play a role right now. This is an information and truth that needs to get out for our country. So I appreciate these fine ladies being with me today. And I thank you for the prayers. And I thank you most of all for all your insight and info on Psalm 91. It's been a blessing to me. And, and I'm sure anybody that's listening to this is going to be blessed by it. So thank you for being on the program with me. Thank you for inviting us. Thank you very much. Thank you, Craig. Talk to you later. <laughs> we'll see.